Warning, the following health news is all about Canada. That's right guys, we finally have some more Canadian stories. Ooh, this is so exciting. Anyway, well, uh, we've got some good news and some bad news to share about medical care up here, but this doesn't just concern us. America actually beat us to the punch on something quite important, which we will never forgive them for. First up is the good news. Every once in a while, a story pops up about a Mormon person getting injured and their family not allowing the doctors to give them a blood transfusion that could save their lives. If a person goes in for any sort of surgery, blood is going to have to leave their body at some point. But you know, maybe we can conform with the Mormons. Maybe we could just put it back. More and more, Canadian hospitals are no longer using donor blood transfusions in surgeries, and they're instead opting to do bloodless surgeries. Sounds kind of crazy, but here at Stuff and Things, we like to look at the facts and figure out the truth. And the facts say this could be a really good thing, not only for patients, but the taxpayers. This whole method involves two basic steps. Firstly, the patient is injected with some drugs that boost hemoglobin levels, uh, increasing the blood's ability to carry oxygen. Then during the surgery, the doctors will recycle the patient's blood by pumping in some anticoagulants and clean it up with some saline solution. The red cells are then returned to the body and the waste is disposed. You're basically just giving yourself a transfusion. Using this method reduces the risk of infection to the patient and eliminates the chances of complications from donated blood, such as the wrong type or immunosuppression. And the patient gets to leave about five days earlier. All good things with no increased risk. Oh, and we almost forgot to mention the whole money thing. Ontario has been saving $39 million a year doing this, so that's also good. This should probably be a thing more places are looking at doing, especially you, America, but you guys are way faster in letting your people know about a potentially harmful drugs, so I, I guess we're even. That's right, uh, 11 months after the FDA required labels to be updated in the States, Health Canada is finally doing the same. The drugs in question are called statins. Uh, and they're used for lowering cholesterol, but they're also linked to increased blood sugar levels and people getting diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So what we want to know from you is what do you guys think are some things that, you know, that North America needs to get on in their health care systems in Canada and the US? Let us know in the comments down below. And of course, if you like what you've seen from us, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And we'll see you in the day later. Yeah, later. <laughs> Good job, Canada. Getting right on that. Yeah. 11 extra months for people to get the diabetes. Yeah. <laughs>